Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to talk about one of the very important types of membrane transport that is bulk transport. In the previous video I talked about how the substances like gases, water, amino acid, sugar, ions will be transported either via passive transport or through the channel and the transporter across the plasma membrane. But what about the larger molecules? Or how the movement of substances in a bulk quantity takes place across the membrane? Yes, that is via bulk transport. So as the name indicates, bulk transport means transport of substances in a bulk quantity. So in bulk transport, it is a transport that is export or import of large molecule or the molecule in a larger quantity through the plasma membrane. So for the transport of molecule or the substances in large quantity, it requires energy. So bulk transport is also an active transport. Okay. So mainly there are two types of bulk transport, exocytosis and endocytosis. So we will discuss it one by one. First one exocytosis. As the name indicates, exo means outside. Cytosis means transport mechanism. So exocytosis means it is a transport of substances in a bulk quantity from inside to outside of the cell because it is a type of bulk transport. So the substances will be transported in a bulk. So what kind of material will be transported via exocytosis? Mainly the waste material and the cellular secretions. So waste material which is produced inside the cell will be expelled out of the cell via exocytosis and the cellular secretion like proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, chemicals and the signaling molecules which is produced inside the cell which will be transported out of the cell via exocytosis because those materials are needed by the glands or any other cells to perform certain functions so it need to be exported out. We will see how exactly exocytosis takes place by taking an example. We will take an example of protein. So where does protein synthesis takes place? Proteins are synthesized in the ribosome, isn't it? So major part of the proteins are synthesized by the ribosome which is present on the endoplasmic reticulum. So after synthesis of protein, the protein undergoes certain changes in the rough endoplasmic reticulum and later it will be transported to Golgi complex. So in the Golgi complex, these proteins are concentrated and they are modified and finally they are packaged into the vesicle. So this is a vesicle which consists of protein. Okay, So it will be packaged into a vesicle. And these vesicles are membrane bound body. So the membrane of the vesicle structurally it is similar to that of the plasma membrane. Okay. And this vesicle ultimately it transport to the edge of the cell that is it reaches the plasma membrane. So once it reaches the plasma membrane, the membrane of the vesicle it will merge or it will fuse with the plasma membrane. And the content which is present in the vesicle, it will be expelled or released out. In some other cases, these vesicles upon reaching the plasma membrane, it will release its contents to outside and immediately it will pinch off from the plasma membrane or it will separate from the plasma membrane and this vacant or empty vesicle, it will come back to the cytoplasm. Okay, so this is how exactly the exocytosis process takes place. In other cases, the proteins are also synthesized by the free ribosomes which is present in the cytoplasm, isn't it? So these proteins which is produced by this free ribosome, they directly enter into the pre-existing vesicles. And these vesicles are later transported to the edge of the cell. Upon reaching the plasma membrane, their content will be released out. Okay, So this is how exactly the exocytosis takes place. So that is about the first type exocytosis. The second type is endocytosis. As the name indicates, endo means inside. Cytosis means transport mechanism. So endocytosis is a general term which is used for different kinds of active transport in which the particle from outside of the cell, it will be taken into the cell by forming a vesicle which is made up of plasma membrane. And this is the basic principle of endocytosis which hold goods for all type of endocytosis okay so it is a process in which the particle from outside of the cell is taken into the cell by forming a vesicle 
There are mainly three types of endocytosis. Phagocytosis, pinocytosis and receptor mediated endocytosis. We will discuss it one by one. The word phagocytosis is derived from the Greek word phagin. Phagin means to eat. So as the name indicates, phagocytosis means it is an intake of a solid particle or foreign particle from outside of the cell to inside. And the foreign particles may be a bacterium or a cellular debris or the fragment of cell etc. So we will see how exactly the phagocytosis takes place. In the first step, the solid particles or the foreign particle will come and binds to the receptor which is present on the plasma membrane. So these solid particles or the foreign particles will also have certain chemical which fits into the receptor. So phagocytosis is a specific process. Okay. So this process is called as adsorption. So adsorption means attachment of the foreign particle to the receptor which is present on the plasma membrane. So which is a first process in the phagocytosis. So after adsorption the plasma membrane will expand along the surface of this foreign particle and it eventually engulf that foreign particle to form a structure called as a phagosome. And this phagosome will be of size 1 to 2 micrometer. Now this phagosome will enter into the cell and inside the cell this phagosome will bind with the lysosome to form phagolysosome. In phagolysosome stage the lytic enzyme which is present in the lysosome it will digest this foreign particle. So after digestion the digested part will be diffused into the cytoplasm. On the other hand the undigested part will be expelled out of the plasma membrane. So finally the ingested particle will be digested. So the main steps in the phagocytosis is adsorption, formation of phagosome, formation of phagolysosome, digestion, absorption and ejection. Okay. That is regarding phagocytosis and the second type is pinocytosis. So the word pinocytosis is derived from the Greek word penin. So which means to drink. So pinocytosis is also called as a cell drinking. So it is a process in which the extracellular fluid will be taken into the cell. So whatever the substances which is dissolved in this extracellular fluid is also taken into the cell. So this pinocytosis takes place in most of the cell and it is a very frequent process or it is takes place continuously. We will see how exactly pinocytosis takes place. So at first the plasma membrane will invaginate and it will engulf a certain portion of extracellular fluid. So later this portion will be pinched off from the remaining portion of the plasma membrane to form a vesicle called as pinosomes. So these pinosomes will be smaller in size when it is compared to phagosomes. Okay. So this pinosomes later it will move towards the center of the cell where it fuses with the lysosome to form food vacuoles or pinolysosome. So in this food vacuole stage the hydrolytic enzyme which is present in this lysosome it will digest the food particle. So the digested food particle will be later diffused into the cytoplasm. Okay. So that is regarding the pinocytosis. Third type of endocytosis is receptor mediated endocytosis. So it is a special type of endocytosis in which only a specific portion of the plasma membrane undergo endocytosis and that region is called as coated pit. So what is the speciality of this region then? So as you can see in the diagram, it consists of a specific receptor on the extracellular side of the membrane and it consists of a coated pit binding receptor on the cytoplasmic side of the membrane. So this coated pit binding receptor, it is made up of protein called as clathrin. So only this region can undergo endocytosis. So when it can undergo endocytosis, the specific receptor which is present on the membrane, when it binds to the ligand, it undergo endocytosis. So what do you mean by ligand? Ligand may be any kind of macromolecule like protein, cholesterol, vitamin, oligosaccharide, anything. So when this ligand combined binds to this receptor, that portion undergo endocytosis to form a structure called as a coated vesicle. Okay. So this coated vesicle will be covered by clathrin protein. Now this coated vesicle move towards the center of the cell. 
during which the clathrin and the associated protein will disappear. Once the clathrin disappears, this vesicle will bind with the endosome and the digestion of the ingested particle takes place. Okay, so that is about the receptor mediated endocytosis. Means endocytosis which is mediated by the receptor which is present on the surface of the plasma membrane. Then what is the difference between phagocytosis and receptor mediated endocytosis? Because in the phagocytosis also it has a receptor on the plasma membrane, isn't it? So what is the difference? The main difference is in the phagocytosis it does not consist of a clathrin protein. And the other difference is in the receptor mediated endocytosis the ligand molecule does not consist of a receptor. Okay. So whereas here the solid particle it has a chemical which will bind to the receptor. Okay, so that is the main difference between phagocytosis and the receptor mediated endocytosis. So these are the main three types of endocytosis. That is all about exocytosis and endocytosis. I hope you understood the concept of bulk transport. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.